Well, let's see here. I think what we have to do is think in terms of the exhaustion of our own cultural forms. I mean, that's what we're living through, is a global dying created by the exhaustion of our cultural forms and the vitality of the cultural forms that we see uh, in these so-called primitive, I call them pre-literate people. As Nicole pointed out, they have nothing but what they seem to have that we cannot seem to get a grip on is a kind of dynamic equilibrium with their environment and peace of mind in the felt experience of the moment. These are the two things we don't have. As a society, we cannot seem to make peace with nature. As human beings, as individuals, it's very hard for us to be at peace with ourselves. I mean, I consider my own life a, a, the search for peace of mind. Forget enlightenment, forget shunyata, all this stuff. You know, just a little peace of mind would be a, a tremendous boon as far as I can see. So I, I really think that there's a confluence here of themes and possibilities. It has this richly plotted uh, texture that always lets you know that you're in the presence of uh, a higher order of things. It's that the shamans whom we admire, who we idealize, are seen to be at the center of this environment, the warm jungle, the tropics, the warm tropics, that we find it necessary to destroy. So it's a perfect image of us being at war, not only with ourselves, but with nature itself. And, uh, you know, for, you've heard all about how the Amazon and the Congo Basin and Eastern Indonesia are all being cleared and lumbered and uh, turned into cattle ranches. This is a tragedy, obviously. We understand and can perceive the dynamics of that. But how to make sense of a situation where, as the World Bank and the IMF attempt to halt this kind of destruction, on the other side of the coin, uh, the United States State Department and the DEA and these agencies propose and are planning to carry out the defoliation of the Wajaga Basin. So there's a schizophrenia here that is not academic. I mean, are we trying to get the patient well or are we pulling the plugs one by one? We seem to be acting in both dimensions simultaneously. And I think it's because we have not in this culture awakened to the depth of the crisis that surrounds us. You know, there's a lot of uh, kind of self-congratulatory backslapping going around these days over the fact that communists everywhere are in hot water and have to admit that they did it wrong. And this gives a lot of satisfaction to uh, people who feel that that means we did it right. We didn't do it right. They did it wrong and now admit they did it wrong. We do it wrong and have yet to even raise the possibility of turning away from what we are doing. The internal contradictions of Marxism were based on a false definition of what people are. People do not respond to central planning, hortatory propaganda, and stereotyping. Neither do people respond uh, to uh, an, etho an ethos of self-denial or a view of human beings that denies the fact that we have certain itches which must be scratched. So, you know, I think that the collapse of Marxism is only the collapse of the outer edge of the societal and civilizing assumptions that we have made. After all, Marxism is nothing more than the millenarian uh, retread of Christian millenarianism. 
And so is modern science, yet another secular retread of Christian millenarianism. So our culture is in trouble, not trouble. We are at a terminal crisis, a bifurcation that is, it can only go one of two ways, horror beyond your wildest imagination or breakthrough to dignity, decency, community and caring beyond your wildest imagination. Now, where do you look for models? Where do you go? The answer is so obvious. You go to nature. Nature has been playing this game for three billion years on this planet. We have been playing the game, we, the apostles of Christian scientism, for about 2,000 years. Nature has an economy, an elegance, a style that if we could but emulate it, we could rise out of the rubble that we are making of the planet. You know, it was the geographer Carl Sauer who said, man found the planet a climaxed primeval forest. He, and notice the gender here, he will leave the planet a weedy lot. A weedy lot. Well, now this is a metaphor where you change climaxed rainforest for weeds, but it's also true. By clearing land, we promote the kind of plant evolution that stresses very rapid seed production and annular cycles of growth, in other words, weeds. And this tendency to find perfection and then to leave rubble in our wake has haunted us for the past three or four thousand years of our history. Now, with the ozone shield disappearing, with acid rain falling on the earth that can melt blocks of marble, with the CO2 levels rising, uh, with the levels of strontium and uh, chlorofluorocarbons, and you know the litany. We have now one last chance to fish or cut bait. And the place where nature has provided the models for how to respond to this situation is the climax rainforest. Only the climax tropical rainforest has the kind of complexity of signal transfer, uh, uh, movement of nutritional materials, movement of electromagnetic radiation that we find in the modern city. It is a cliche of modernity that the city is a jungle. The problem is it isn't jungle enough. And I think it's the task of the new shamans to take the metaphor of the jungle, which is a metaphor of tremendous uh, wealth, tremendous variety, tre a tremendous outpouring of form and of energy and of uh, potential fulfillment of various bifurcation patterns of flow, to take that and in, enrich our own lives with it. And the way this is done is by empowering the, the presence of experience. We have not in this culture awakened to the depth of the crisis that surrounds us. I mean, are we trying to get the patient well or are we pulling the plugs one by one? 